Pulver and man, Teddy Kegstad, folks. We talk to Teddy every Wednesday at 40 past the hour. You can read Teddy's take on the market in his weekly newsletter, The Tiger Forex Report. Check it out at TFNN.com, folks. It comes out every Monday. He's got updates during the week. And as I talked about, man, coming into this segment, the way that we have everything impacting the markets right now from Forex to commodities to rates to yields across the world. It's a great time to know what's going on in those Forex markets, even if you don't trade them and how in terms of how shaping they are of other markets. Teddy Kegsat, good morning. Good morning, Tommy. So we uh, we always get you on an interesting day. We get you on Fed Day sometimes. Today we get you on Fed Minutes Day coming up at 2 p.m. Eastern time. We just had the retail sales going on. Uh, but maybe we kick it off in crude, as we've talked about for a while, <laughs> approaching some pretty lower levels. I think we got an 86 handle potentially, as I talk to you right now, hovering around 86 bucks for the price of crude. What's your take uh, on this crude market? Uh, well, definitely where it's trading right now, that definitely is very bearish, obviously, we're making sure. lows. I mean, there's no denying that. You know I'm a long-term bull. Uh, I think that one of the things you're seeing is a little bit of a balancing now. You know, we have, you got to remember, six months ago, we were in a much different state. You know, we had such supply issues and um, supply chain issues that was impacting a lot of the pricing and stuff like that. You know, I mean, remember the ports in, you know, in California were jammed up with tankers, you know, going out as far as the eye could see and stuff like that. You had diesel trucks sitting idly, just burning diesel day after day, hour after hour, waiting to get, you know, you know, stuff loaded up on their trucks, you know, as well as also Americans finally could get out, you know. So now the things I think are stabilizing, maybe that has a little bit to do with it. Um, gas prices aren't going down. So crude may be going down, but gas, gas actually went up by us over 60 cents just over the past few days, you know. So um, I'm still a long term uh, bull for the U.S. or for the crude oil market. Right now, I'd be very careful, you know, but I'd be really careful selling into these lows. That's for sure. If anything, I'd be trading the options and not the futures right now. Yeah, I mean, volatility in both directions, man, on these moves. We've seen a, mm -hmm. a series of lower lows and lower highs and pretty remarkable that we're talking about mm -hmm. almost two and a half months now of negative action. And we're mm -hmm. almost back to where you were um, as a technical trader, man. You're talking about highs. We've looked at them before. They stick out on the chart just last October. Mm -hmm. Um, almost back to those price levels with everything kind of up in the air right now. Mm -hmm. And I'm sorry, one real quick th more thing to add to that. You, if you look at the further out months, they're at a premium. So no matter what, the expectations by the market is that we're going to have higher crude uh, prices in the uh, future. Yeah, I mean, I guess that would make sense coming into the the winter months or energy in general. Um, I know Europe, that's a, that's a whole show we could do a conversation. Uh, speaking of Europe, the UK inflation this morning, what's your, your action on, on kind of the UK over there? I mean, what's it, 10 point something inflation? They think it's going up to 13.3. Mm -hmm. um, I'm not sure if you heard, if you were listening to the program coming into it. But right now we're in, you know, a market where the Fed's the first one to act in pretty dramatic fashion, right? We're hiking 75, 75, mm -hmm. 50. We have higher yield. That's driving demand in the dollar that we've seen. Uh, at some point that should shift, Teddy. But, you know, if it's a matter of, you know, when, not if, that could stretch out for a long period of time with what's playing out right now. Mm -hmm. Do you keep that in mind as you look at these currency pairs? And, and where do you see that potentially, mm -hmm. you know, where, where, how, I guess, what kind of legs do you see the dollar having right now with this relationship? And do you see it changing mm -hmm. at all? Uh, well, definitely, I pay attention to the yields because interest rates are, are definitely a function of currency pricing, depending on which leg you're talking about, you know, which side you're on. But absolutely, there's one of the reasons the dollar is so strong is because our central bank is the most aggressive at raising rates right now. You know, so that is definitely one of the factors that has helped to, to promote a bull market in the dollar versus most currencies, you know. Now, when you talk about, like, for instance, the UK, you know, they're in a disastrous shape right now. Obviously, their numbers are not looking good. And in the EU, it's even worse. I mean, Germany's falling apart at the seams, literally. You know, I mean, I, everything I've read on them in the past week just makes everything that I was looking at already a couple of weeks ago look pale in comparison to what they're looking at right now. You know, so and <clears throat> especially because they're not raising rates like we are. That's going to cause a big, you know, differential change between the strength of the dollar versus these currencies, you know. So, I mean, remember how a couple of weeks ago we were looking at the euro and the pound railing versus the dollar. Now, this that move we've been talking about or I've been saying has been a corrective move that you should view it as that because the long term trend has been obviously bullish the dollar. So we've definitely peaked in those currencies. 
I mean, the pound is the one that's a little bit more sideways because it has a little more stability than the EU. I mean, remember, the UK only has to deal with the UK. They really don't care what goes on in the EU anymore, you know? Yeah. So um, so that's probably, and I've been saying that for a long time, that as the US dollar is a bull against these European currencies, the pound's the one that's going to get hit the least. You know, the euro, I yes. think, is really, really set up for a free fall. You know, I mean, there, there is nothing, there's no, even if they start to raise rates in the ECB, I don't see that that's, I think that'll slow the slide. It's not going to actually give it a, a lift, you know. So, they got some not, issues. I would agree, mm -hmm. man. And I just, so, I got it up here on a daily and it's a pretty well-defined channel line, man. For those of you sure. out there that love channels on a daily basis, mm -hmm. uh, I don't even have to draw these lines on this chart to show you that it's just bumping up against that upper boundary line. And boy, if you head down to mm -hmm. the lower boundary line of that channel line I got on that chart, man, we're probably talking 97 at least um, right. on that chart. Sure, sure. You know, and then as far as the central banks, you have to remember, too, now we have China that they're under pressure for them to start yeah. easing rates, you know, so which is a completely counter trend, you know, idea as far as the central banks of the world are concerned. So and if they start easing rates, that's going to really put the currency markets into a, a little bit of a tizzy. You know, most people don't think about the Chinese currency as far as what it really how it relates to the rest of the world but believe it or not it actually does you know so because that would lift other currencies not necessarily meaning that that's going to make them bulls against the dollar but it does change things on the economics of things because china's struggling you know if you remember 2008 yeah. China was literally about six months to a less than a, less than a year away from other utter economic collapse because when we when the consumer engine of the United States dried up, there was no more cash coming in. The rest of the world can't support the Chinese manufacturing engine. Even China can't produce, you know, support it, you know, because the average people in China, except for in the major cities, they can't afford anything anyhow, you know. So and now you're looking at a situation where with COVID and all these lockdowns that whether they've had it or whether the globe had it. It's restricted commerce, you know, sure. so all that cash, you know, we know their books are cooked to begin with, you know, but if they don't have cash flow. Well, you can lie about your numbers all you want. You still don't have any money. I guess. Right. <laughs> it comes to roost. Totally. Yeah. So uh, and the yen, let's jump to the yen real quick. Uh, yeah. The yen, we're back to 135, uh, pushing yeah. up where we were almost uh, when we were well, day before we were chatting some volatility. What's your take on the yen right now? Uh, uh, sitting at 135. I am bullish to yen again. You know, I mean, it's interesting because with this huge slide that we've had in crude, remember crude oil was one of the reasons that I was very bullish to US dollar yen for a long time, you know? Yes. So obviously with this pullback, that is helping to probably keep this mark, the yen that's, you know, from where it was at, I mean, it topped out below 140 and came back to almost 130 again, which 130 is the magic number for Japan because they really don't want the US dollar yen above a dollar third, or uh, 130, excuse me. Nice. And now you look at how we bounced over the past couple of sessions. I'm a bull. I think we're going to go make a run for 140. Folks, you heard the great education. Teddy, I appreciate it, man. I've learned so much over the years chatting with you and uh, Thanks, just some more your reference. And check out the Tiger Forex report under newsletters, folks. Teddy, I appreciate it. We'll talk to you next week, man. Sounds good, Tommy. You guys have okay. a great day. Have a great one.